Don't run second. I don't know who's on third. You know the fellow's well, name? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who is on first? Have you got a first base when I'm first? Certainly. Then who's playing first? Absolutely. Off camera, they grew to be the best of friends most of the time. Bob Fermanac has been personal archivist for Abbott and Costello Estate since 1984. He's written a book called Abbott and Costello in Hollywood, and he joins us from New York. And in Los Angeles, Bud Abbott Jr. and Patty Costello Humphreys join us, son and daughter of Abbott and Costello. Thank you all for joining us. I'd like to start with you, Mr. Fermanac. What was the origin, briefly, of that wonderful routine that we saw the clip of, the Who's on First routine? Uh, Who's Off First was a, a classic uh, burlesque routine that went back to the early 1900s. And Bud and Lou weren't the first people to perform it, but uh, they certainly uh, became the most popular uh, team to do the routine. And it's because of their rendition of it that it's uh, become the comedy classic it is today. They revised it a bit. <clears throat> Exactly, and they added their little bits to it, and, and really what, if you look at the routine in print, it's not very funny. If you, uh, if you see other people do it, it's not very funny, but, but their uh, energy and their timing is really what sells it. Exactly. Mr. Abbott and Ms. Humphreys, I'd like for each of you to describe your father's persona in contrast to what most of us saw on the screen. Let's start with you, Mr. Abbott. Uh, yeah, Dad, uh, uh, you know, he, on the screen he was a straight man and uh, sometimes portrayed a very uh, mean uh, straight man. But in, uh, in his uh, real life, he was a very gentle, uh, kind and giving man, a uh, great sense of humor, great prankster, loved to play jokes. Ms. Humphreys? Uh, the joke part is true. They were always playing jokes on one another. Uh, that kind of kept them going. My dad at home uh, was quiet. I think a lot of comedians are when you take them out of that entertainment environment. Um, he, was, uh, he was a great father and I remember when I was a small child if I was sick he'd come into the room and he'd walk into a wall or something to make me laugh. Um, things like that. Well I'd like to show a short clip now of another little bit we have of Abbott trying to swindle Costello out of some of the cash as he was so often doing in a lot of the bits they did. This was from Buck Privates. Let's look at that. Oh, do me a favor, loan me fifty dollars. Schmitty, I can't. I can't lend you fifty dollars. Oh, yes, you can. No, I can't. All I got is forty dollars. That's all. All right, give me the forty dollars and you owe me ten. Okay, I owe you ten. That's right. How come I owe you ten? But what did I ask you for? Fifty. And how much did you give me? Forty. So you owe me ten dollars. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Fermanac, some very clever writing. Who was behind a lot of that writing that we saw? Well, a lot of their bits came out of burlesque. They had a, a, a writer by the name of John Grant that uh, worked with them from the mid-30s up uh, until the, the last few pictures. And Bud and Lou really depended on John Grant to take a lot of their classic uh, routines and incorporate them into the films. Oh, oh, you guys are going the wrong way. Will you get in line here? We're watching another bit from the movie where you're seeing the drill routine. This one was a more visual piece of comedy than the writing. Executed with interesting timing. I guess that was part of the secret, Mr. Fermanac. Yeah, exactly. Uh, an interesting story about the drill routine is that uh, it was shot and then previewed at the studio. And the director, Arthur Lubin, uh, realized that he had some priceless comedy there. So he instructed the editor to put every available piece of footage together and lengthen the routine. And it, it uh, played three or four minutes. And it, it was one of the biggest hits of that film. Interesting. Mr. Abbott, your father lived until 1974. He was 78 years old. But we didn't hear much about him in those last years, really even in the 60s. How did he spend the last decade or so? Well, he, uh, he, he lived in Woodland Hills. He, he moved out of Encino, uh, out here uh, in San Fernando Valley. And uh, he did a GE theater. He did one dramatic role after that with Idol Pino and Lee Marvin. And then he just, uh, he retired. He just uh, stopped working. Uh, he, I think he was waiting for Lou. What about you, Ms. Humphreys? What do you remember about your father and what he did with his time? He died of a heart attack. Uh, what year was that? Uh, that was in 1959. And were you, how old were you? Uh, I was 22. So you had grown up with him, really. How, what was he like oh, during yeah. his last years? Uh, he was great. Uh, he spent a lot of time at Hollywood Park in Santa Anita with the horses, so he, um, he was pretty happy. Um, I think towards the end, things kind of wound down for him a little bit because his health wasn't all that good uh, right at the end, but um, 
I have a lot of good memories. If he were here today, is there anything that you would like to do with your father, things that you would like him to see in today's world? Yes, definitely. I would take him to see Rain Man because I was so proud when I left the theater after seeing that movie. I would say, see, Dad, it's been 30 years and you're still up there. They used a little bit from the Who's on First routine. They did. They, it, it, it was a thread that ran throughout the whole picture, and uh, it was beautiful. Um, I think he would be very, very proud, and I know Bud would, too, to Mr. know that... Excuse me, go ahead. No, finish, please. No, I was just going to say that, that their comedy, uh, uh, Who's on First, has survived, you know, for so long. Mr. Fermanek, we only have a few seconds left, and I'm wondering if you can give us the abridged version of the breakup of Abbott and Costello. Well, it was 1956. Uh, they had been together for 20 years, and uh, they just had done everything. Uh, they were very successful, 16 years in movies, and it was time to go on uh, and, and try different things. And uh, it was a, a, a warm breakup. There wasn't bad feelings about it. Uh, and it was the same year Martin and Lewis broke up. So. Because we heard that there were some bad feelings involved. There were a lot of stories about that, but not so in your research? No, we found in doing the book that a lot of things over the years have been blown out of proportion and uh, one of the things we, we set out to do with the book was get the story straight on their movies and their, their relationship and I think we've accomplished that. Well, thank you very much, Lo Humphreys and Bud Abbott Jr. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Tomorrow on Early Prime, finding new ways to live life to the fullest. We'll talk to a doctor who has...